day 804 being Christopher Cruz. Um, it is, I think, three o'clock. I'm just leaving Starbucks. I went there to read this book and got to two pages and just started, God just started revealing some stuff. Um, so powerful. <sighs> yeah, it was powerful. Uh, the first thing that I realized is that warriors, warriors of God is meant to be the modern day church of the book of Acts. So in the book of Acts, they were expanding the church, performing miracles. You know, this was the whole, there's a paragraph in the book of Acts that, um, in the Bible where I read that and I'm like, that's exactly what I want warriors of God to be. And this just hit me like warriors, warriors of God will be the modern day church of the book of Acts. Like we are going to be, not churches in like, you know, you go to a, a church and you know, there's a pastor, but church is in like the body of Christ, like a family, a tribe. And I was just like, wow, like that's what we're actually meant to be. And it's going to be the most powerful believers in the world. It's going to be uh, the most devoted believers, like the believers that are the most on fire for God and have the spirit of God and the fruit of God and the gifts of God and all these amazing things. And then it hit me that I'm in my clients' lives to deliver them from the enemy. I'm not meant to coach them. I'm meant to deliver them. They're all going through deliverance. And I was like, oh my God, some of them need to be delivered from spirits, uh, you know, the spirit of depression, the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of suicide, the spirit of fear, the spirit of lack, the spirit of anger, the, the spirit of, I mean, all the confusion, like all these different things. And I'm just like, oh my God, like this is so much bigger than like purpose coaching and and they are all in bondage right now and that's why they're suffering and and god brought me into their lives to deliver them like this is where it was just like wow because they're all i can see they're all under such attack of the enemy in in their own unique way and it's just like uh, and i'm just like you know the traditional coaching is not doing it which is why i need to step into the spiritual and and really go for it because I'm focusing on the the coaching fundamentals, not the spiritual truths. And I was just like, wow, wow. And um, when I talked to my client today, when she uh, wanted to do a call real quick to talk about a message she had for God, she said, I forgot this, um, but she said, Chris, you need to learn about the the gifts of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit. And I was like looking up the gifts of the spirit and the fruits of the spirit. And I was just like, wow, I, I really do need to learn these things. And uh, so it's like, yeah, I'm in my clients' lives to deliver them from the enemy, from strongholds, lies, deception, demonic influences, sickness, disease, depression, and that I need to go to the next level because I'm struggling to deliver them because I'm not developing my own deliverance. And I need to see this as this is not coaching, this is deliverance. And the reason why the enemy is attacking my clients so powerfully is because my clients in Christ will be so powerful, which is why they're under attack. I know that they're all like such bright shining lights in this world. And the things that they resist from me is the thing that needs to be delivered from them. You know, there's some of my clients, when I talk about God, they start, they start to get irritated. Well, that spirit of unbelief or that spirit of pride or that spirit of whatever it is that's resisting me talking about God needs to be delivered, you know, or if I, you know, challenge them on something, you know, and it's the spirit of pride that needs to be delivered. So there's these demonic spirits and, and influences that are fighting them inside. And I need to realize I'm not fighting my client. I'm fighting the enemy in my client and I need to deliver that. And it makes sense why God is showing me so much about fasting. Like I've like fasting, I've never understood it really from a spiritual standpoint, except like, oh, okay, you're just supposed to get closer to God. But I never under, understood it from like a spiritual gifts point, like, like setting people free, delivering them, you know, all these different things. And I'm just like, I'm learning that. And I'm like, wow, that's incredible. Like I, I never understood that. And so I just, I can't stop reading this book. Like I'm so excited. I'm already 73 pages into it. And I just started reading it, I think three days ago or something. 
and I'm just like, God is just revealing so much. And I was just going to the bathroom and I, I have a lot of realizations when I'm going to the bathroom, but um, I was going to the bathroom and then I just like had this like thought, this realization, like, I don't think God is giving me this deep desire, this deep nudge to fast. I don't think he's giving me that for the future. Like what I know in my experience of life is when God nudges you, it's for now. It's right now. He's not nudging you for, hey, in, in, in five weeks, do this. No, he's nudging you like, hey, right now. So if God sends you something, it's a now thing, not a in two weeks thing or three weeks thing. It's not like in the future thing. It's the now thing. And I could be wrong, but that's just my experience of it. And so I'm looking at this and my plan is like, okay, I'm going to start my fast January 1st, you know, and that's when the church starts it, the the Daniel fast, the 30 day, 30 day Daniel fast when the church starts it. So I was like, you know, I'll start it then. And um, that gives me two weeks and my mom and dad are going to be here and my mom's going to be cooking a delicious food, lasagna and soups and, you know, all this. And it's, you know, I could just eat whatever I want and, you know, it'll be great. And then I'll start the fast. But I remember reading in here, he was saying that when you begin fasting, it is very uncomfortable for demons to be in your presence. When, when you fast, it is uncomfortable for, for demonic spirits to be around you, to be in your presence, because you start to uh, have a deeper anointing of the Holy Spirit, like you are more connected to God and your energy is more powerful. And so demonic spirits get very uncomfortable around you. And so I'm looking at that and thinking about that. And it's like, okay, my mom and dad are coming here. And, and it's like, I don't think they're just coming here. Um, I don't think they're just coming here for Christmas. You know, that's what it looks like. Oh, let's all get together. It's family. It's Christmas. I think that's all of our plans, but I think God has a very different plan. You know, maybe all three of us are going to be delivered from something that we're struggling with, you know, um, maybe anger, resentment, alcohol, frustration, uh, self-worth, you know, all, all the things, you know, that, that we all, all three of us struggle with in our own unique way. And so I'm like, okay, Chris, this isn't just Christmas. This is, God is doing this. And so while your parents are here, do you just want to like eat and just feed more of, of that darkness in you that just wants to, to eat and the gluttony and just the, the comforting through food and just continue to like give my flesh all the power and give my, you know, my, my body all the power while my parents are here. So I'm less powerful spiritually or do I want to deny my flesh and give my spirit the power and connect with God on a level level that I never have before and be around my parents in that state? And it's just like, shh. so I've had this thought, this crazy thought that I'm going to start fasting now. This crazy thought that during Christmas, the holiday season with my parents here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast. That's the thought I've had. And my body is like, no way. Your mom's going to be making the most delicious food. Like so much of your guys' time together is going to be centered around food. Like, you know, your dad loves snacks and, you know, you guys like sitting together and watching a movie and eating popcorn and cheese and crackers. And your mom cooks the most amazing things ever. And, you know, your dad can cook stuff too. And it's just like, what? No, you can't do that. They're going to be cooking all these delicious things. And what are you going to be doing? Drinking beet juice? Like, no way. Nope, 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 nope. My flesh is just like, no, that's ridiculous. And you're not strong enough to do that. You're not strong enough to be able to resist that. But it comes down to like, like what's more important? Feeding my spirit or feeding my flesh? 
And while my parents are here for two weeks, I want to be more spiritually connected to God than I ever have been in my life because who knows the impact that that can have on them. Because if God brought my clients into my life, in my life to help me deliver them from these things, well, I'm sure he's bringing my mom and dad into my life right now to help deliver them from some things. You know, maybe there's a spirit of depression on them or a spirit of fear or a spirit of anxiety. Um, you know, who knows? I don't know what it what a, what spirit could be, but um, I know that we all struggle with things. And so what if me fasting gives me access to God more, to the Holy Spirit more, and and I'm able to deliver them from things, whether it's just loving them or conversations with them or just being around them or I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how deliverance works, but it's like over these next two weeks, I could be the worst version of myself physically and just eat and eat and eat which is what I was planning to do and go into the new year just feeling like crap knowing that I've gained more weight and that I've just been like poisoning my body the whole time but it's like oh but it's okay January 1st juice fast or and then I'd be launching warriors of God from that state too and just trying to like catch up to like feeling good or I could spend the next two weeks, the last two weeks of the year. Defeating my flesh and connecting with God and taking back the power from my body. Because there are things that my body dominates me on that I need to, I need to let go of. I need to free myself from because... It's just, it's a stronghold. I need to be delivered myself. And I think why this is why this is such a, a powerful thing for me and why I really want to do a 30-day juice fast is because I need to show myself that my flesh is not in control anymore. You know, my flesh is not in control. Like, I get to choose what I eat. I get to choose when I wake up in the morning. I get to choose when I go to sleep. I get to choose whether you know I have lustful thoughts or not like I get to choose I'm in control I'm I have power over this not the enemy and my flesh doesn't have power over my spirit my spirit has power over my flesh the reality is, is that's just not the case and that hasn't been for a very long time because I've been overweight since I was eight years old and so I lost that power a long time ago and I need to gain it back I need to take it back because when we go into January, I'm launching Warriors of God and I need to be in a spiritual place where I can hold the space for my client's deliverance. Like there are 12 people, 12 clients. How crazy is that? Uh, shoot, 12 clients. Jesus had 12 disciples. How crazy is that, right? So 12 clients um, that I'm working with right now. And I need to be able to hold the space for them spiritually. I need to be a leader. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I was just like, I don't think God is nudging me this hard. Like, I just feel something. I don't think God is nudging me to say, hey, Chris, start in, start in two weeks. You know, start after your mom and dad leave and you know, right at the beginning of the new year, you know, that makes sense. It's New Year's resolutions. The church is starting the fast, you know, just, you know. And my flesh is like, yeah, 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 definitely. That works. And the next two weeks, just eat whatever the heck you want. Just go to town. Your mom's here. She's going to cook lasagna and this and that. Just go for it. Go all out. Then we'll start. And it's like, isn't that just... How many thousands of times have I said to myself when it comes to my body and my weight, oh, I'm going to start my diet on Monday. I'm going to start tomorrow. Ah, just this one thing. I'm going to start in three days. And here I am, 35 years old, still overweight for the last 22 years, 27 years. It's crazy. 27 years I've been saying oh yeah no, I'll start I'll st Monday 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 and 
how challenging would it be to be on a freaking juice fast while my mom and dad are eating like kings and queens? <laughs> uh, well, that's actually not the case. I would be eating like a king or queen because I'd be drinking pure nutrients, you know, from these cold pressed juices that I'd be making. Oh, man. It's very, uh, very confronting. But I just, like, like, God just showed me, like, you're not here to coach these people. You're here to deliver them. And, like, my parents coming out there, I think I'm here to love them, but I also believe I'm here to deliver them from something. And I need to be at my best to be able to make that happen. You know, when Jesus says that there are certain spirits that you can't cast out unless you pray and fast. Like, what if my mom and dad and myself have some spirits that are influencing us that cannot be delivered without me praying and fasting? It's probably just the reality. So... Why would I wait to pray and fast until after they leave? Like, just doesn't make any sense. The only sense it makes is, oh, it's the holidays. Eat. You're supposed to eat. You're supposed to. Everyone does. Everyone gains weight. Just eat whatever you want. It's the holidays. It's the excuse. But for me to f go on a juice fast now, that would just be the ultimate, like, gut punch to the enemy. <laughs> like... The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said you were mine. And I, and just, just to be able to see what kind of anointing I have, like what kind of connection I have with God if I start fasting. And I remember today I was just like, like I don't have control over food. Like I woke up this morning and I opened the fridge and like, I just really wanted this donut. Like there's a, gla I have a glazed donut that was in the fridge and I was just like, I really want that. And I looked and in the fridge there was a donut and above the, the donut was a thing of blueberries. And I knew, Chris, your body wants the blueberries. Have the blueberries. And there was like this conviction on my heart, like, don't eat the donut. Don't poison yourself first thing in the morning. And I literally grabbed the donut as quick as I could and just started eating it. Just so I didn't have to hear the like conviction in my heart of like, eat the blueberries. And I ate some of the blueberries. I, I took a bite of the donut and then I ate some blueberries and the difference of feeling was just crazy. And so I can just see like, I don't have control over the food I'm eating and me going to the gym every day at 5 a.m. is not going to control the food I ate. It didn't when I did it for three months at all. <laughs> so it's not going to do it now. I got to go to spiritual war, not physical war. And I got to dominate my flesh. I need to I need to make this flesh my slave. So when I speak, it listens rather than when it speaks, I listen. You know, it spoke this morning and said, I want a donut. My spirit spoke and said, I want blueberries. And I caved and, and had the donut. And it's just like, wow, just really showed me like how little control I don't have. It's just the truth. And that's a spirit, you know, that's a spirit of, of gluttony or, or something. And, uh, yeah. Oh, so intense. <laughs> Who the heck starts a 30 day juice fast right before Christmas? Nobody does that. They start it January 1st after they've eaten like crap for two or three weeks or a month since since Thanksgiving. As soon as Thanksgiving starts, it's like, ah, the next five weeks, it's the holidays. Eat whatever you want. Gain the weight. It's cold out. You know, eat, eat food, get warm, feel comfortable. Like who starts a freaking juice fast? It's crazy. So... Yeah, that's, um, but like I said, I don't think, 
from what I know with my experience with God is when God is nudging you, when God is pushing you, when, when the Holy Spirit is guiding you towards something. From my experience, you don't wait. Like if, if God wanted me to do it then, then he would have probably brought it to me then, but he's bringing it to me now. He's showing it to me now. He's helping me learn what fasting does now and how our jobs as believers is to deliver people from these spirits of suppression and these spirits that hold people back. And when you fast, those spirits are very uncomfortable around you and you step into your authority and you're able to deliver people from those spirits. So what are you waiting for, Chris? Wow. Ay, ay, ay.